the story of deciding to move to Armenia this time around? Um, actually, the war changed a lot in all of us, and we started to revalue our lives, missions, values. In my case, I understood that I, this is the time that I can make difference in Armenia, and my presence in Armenia is quite important. And I'm very happy to say that with a group of specialists now, uh, just after the war, we have started to restore the quality of life of dozens of people. So I think it makes sense to come here. And our dear friend, I won't embarrass him, with, oh, but I'll embarrass you, uh, told me there was a veteran who was not able to walk and had a lot of trouble getting the kind of surgery or even having any thought. Uh, and just before there was a choice of whether to amputate his foot, you guys took a chance on printing a piece yeah, of an I, I, Actually, I think that this person himself is a her hero. And I think we need another TEDx for we'll work on that. <laughs> yeah. Point taken. And you you did print that implant, and you guys, somebody did the surgery. Group itself has a long history of making implantation. About over six years, we are preparing customized implant, uh, starting from Estonia. Um, Where you were living before you moved here. You were yeah, here actually, I have a long journey. So I was born in Gyumri initially. And actually, I was born just before the tragic earthquake, when the earthquake um, took over 25,000 lives, and over half a million people lost their homes. And I remember that in the past case, we had two hours electricity and 10 minutes water per day, and we should justify any consumption with it. I remember my father always said that if you are alive and you are having breath and having food, you must give back something good to the universe. And I can't forget that once, uh, usually we seven to eight years old kids should carry one liter diesel to the school in order to hit the classroom. And once I forgot that it, might, it was my turn and I forgot my fuel and all my classmates caught cold. And I understood that how important it is to have responsibility. Until nowadays, we face with the situation that lack of responsibility can destroy the lives. So you did the surgery, and now he can walk. Someone did the surgery. You didn't do the surgery, but yeah. somebody did the surgery, and he does not now need to amputate uh, from the ankle down. And it's thanks, in part, to this incredible team effort that included your decision to come back here and begin doing this technology. So tell us a little bit more about the journey from Gumri back to Armenia. You were in Spain. You had to live on three euros a month. How did you um, do that? Yeah. So you're starting <laughs> yeah. to tell me before. Yeah, 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 yeah. you heard about it. Actually, um, after Gumri, I moved to Yerevan. When I was 15 years old, the first time I entered to the university, I was quite young. And then after uh, I got a chance to go to Spain to do my research, actually, uh, when I heard that I'm going to Spain, I was jumping like a ping pong ball because um, the institute that I was planning to go, it seems a heaven for scientists, any kind of researcher, because uh, there were a lot of like huge infrastructure, many equipment and very famous professors. And when I went there, even I remember my professor took me the first day to the museum of the, of the institute. And in the museum, I found equipment that are elder than we had this equipment in our institute in Yerevan. So, but uh, later after, as well, my scholarship was canceled because I was fighting for my rights in Armenia, etc. So when it was canceled, I stayed with three euros for food a budget for one month. But I, as an old scientist, can manage with the challenges. So I found bread with 25 slices and 33 cents. And also I found out that when you cook the rice, rice costs 80 cents, one kilogram. And when you cook the rice, you triple the size and uh, the mass of the rice. So it's really very nice to use it when you are suffering. So <laughs> I, I, I started uh, to survive, actually. And uh, at the same time, I recorded 
five research papers in very good journals within five months. So it was exceptional result and it was the point when I started to make biodegradable implants for humans. Wow. <laughs> I think we had like 8% of the room was laughing at that joke because the rest were just processing your journey. And so you went from Spain to Estonia. Is that right? Yeah, but uh, it's, I think it's very interesting to tell about the feelings that I had with this hunger. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, be actually, <laughs> yeah, I had uh, 50 shades of emotions because when you are in a bad situation and when you are hungry, uh, you become very bad. I was, well, at least I was very unkind person. And after I don't this, believe that. <laughs> no, it was really. When you don't have things, you are very unkind. There is even such kind of cartoon. And after a time, I was quite indifferent towards everything happening. I was unkind because I saw some people eating outside that I couldn't eat. But anyways, and later I was very happy and loving and kind uh, person because I think I became very strong. I could control my mind and because I understood that no financial difficulties, no hunger can control my mind and can control me and my willing what I want to do. But later, actually, the challenges are following me. <laughs> I moved to, the, the, to move to Estonia to do my PhD. And within uh, four years, immediately I got married, had two kids. But because I was managing international projects and I had the responsibility that I got from Gimri, I couldn't just go for maternity leave except three and seven days each time. And how I was doing, actually, every woman can do this because we are strong. We just un underestimate ourselves. Um, I think, yeah, like um, I was um, doing my giving lectures when my kids were sleeping outside of the room. And I was entering to the lab when the kids were sleeping in the office. So uh, I did reports at night, actually, it was possible to do because I think I succeeded because I uh, graduated, I did my PhD with over 20 research papers and I was announced the best PhD graduate in 2016 in Tallinn University of Technology. <laughs> and, but um, I think sometimes, not I think, but it was sometimes I burst into tears uh, when one kid, I was holding one kid in my arms, another was hugging on my legs, and I was should iron the t-shirt of my husband. So I felt some weakness, I burst into tears, but this is also something that I could manage. Like I had a small wardrobe, I entered to my wardrobe, and behind the clothes that nobody can find me, I just stayed there, sat, relax, have a deep breath, I say, Marina, you are a strong woman, so you can control and manage everything. And I just went out. I controlled the situation fully. I said, you should sit there to play with your Legos. You should shut down. I should do Put this. your masks on. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I could control the situation. I think the most important thing is to control your mind, emotions, and feelings and everything can be done. Dr. Marina Arayan, thank you for your service. Thank you too, and actually one more, I think, advice kind of, like, uh, we scientists, doctors, artists, or startuppers, we will always face challenges in our lives because we have totally different mindset, we have different missions in life, we have different role in this earth, and we should be ready to meet challenges. But we should understand that challenges are a very helpful thing. The professional challenges will result in no new innovations and will bring to new breakthrough, but the personal challenges will make us stronger and wiser. And I think that we should use just this challenge in order to improve ourselves and to develop new skills.